But it is a big occasion for United as well, who have only once previously been this far. That was in their debut season. And they reached the quarterfinals, a run that was ended by Reading. Twice recently, though, they've been knocked out early by their crosstown rivals, Manchester City. There's been a, an upset along the way at the hands of Leicester City as well. This a wonderful opportunity for Manchester United to reach the last four for the first time. An historic day for Lewis playing in the last eight of the FA Cup for the very first time. Not that opponents Manchester United can claim a great deal more familiarity. Only once have they been this far. The FA Cup run for Lewis, as welcome as it's been impressive, a happy distraction from a slump in league form with four defeats in their last five in the championship. As for Manchester United, well, their WSL title challenge and 13-game unbeaten run faltered with defeat at Chelsea last weekend. The FA Cup, though, represents another fantastic opportunity to secure the club what would be a first major trophy. Very much a celebratory mood, a party atmosphere in Lewis for the visit of a team that is competing right at the top of the English game and hoping to be competing in the Champions League next season. But there is a quiet confidence and resolve within the Lewis ranks that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manchester United today. There will, however, need to be an upturn in recent performances. And Lewis make three changes from the side that started a 3-1 defeat by London City Lionesses last weekend. Rian cleverly returns to captain the side and provides some defensive experience. Chelsea Loney, Grace Palmer and Nat Johnson also both recalled. Ellie Mason has six goals in her last four appearances, including four in the fifth round win against Cardiff. The likes of Weir and Howells dropping to the bench for Lewis today. They might just need to be a little bit more defensively resilient against a Manchester United side that freshens up to the tune of five alterations. In come Maria Torres Dotti, Vilda Borisa, Lucia Garcia and Martha Thomas. There is also a debut for Norwegian midfielder Lisa Nalsson, who joined in January from Brann. Ella Toon, Hayley Ladd and Nikita Paris drop to the bench. There is no Leah Golton or Hannah Blundell for United today. Huge task ahead of them. This is the FA Cup quarter-final with the biggest disparity between the team's league placings, but with an in-form, versatile player in the shape of Ellie Mason. Who knows what might be possible? She scored the first four goals in a 6-1 win over Cardiff in the fifth round, a first professional hat-trick for a player who came through Chelsea's academy system. As for Manchester United, it is all about getting back to winning ways. A Mark Skinner did suggest that there would be alterations to the side that started the defeats to Chelsea, a defeat that may yet have huge ramifications in terms of their hopes of lifting the WSL title for the first time. The focus today, though, very much on a different piece of silverware, the FA Cup, another trophy that they are yet to win. A huge experience of the women's game gathered during his time with Glasgow City and Birmingham Scott Booth took over at Lewis in May. Mark Skinner is now in his second season as the Manchester United head coach, having succeeded Casey Stoney, who laid so many of the foundation stones for Manchester United's rapid rise towards challenging near the very top of the WSL. Their leading goal scorer, Alessia Russo. Ahead of kickoff, the players from both sides take 
a need to remind us that there is no room for discrimination in football or indeed in wider society. And it is Lewis who get us underway. A game between the side play seventh in the championship and the team second in WSL. The last time Manchester United were here, Siobhan Chamberlain was in their goal. Today she sat alongside me instead. And of course, I'd much rather be sat alongside you. Um, no, it was, a, it was a, a brilliant occasion when we went down to the, the dripping pan before the pitch has taken a turn for the better. It's a brilliant surface out there today and one which I'm sure both teams will look forward to be playing on. I've been told, by the way, if you want to know why it's called the dripping pan, then you have to buy the club historian a pint, so uh, form an orderly queue. Or Google it, I guess. This is uh, Maya Letizia for Manchester United. The, the one area where they've not made too many alterations is uh, across the back four with just Torre's daughter coming into that quartet. A demonstration there of the eagerness from Lewis, though, to make sure that any opportunity to win back possession is taken at the first opportunity. It's going to be a balance for Lewis today of how much they're going to press, how much they're going to, they're going to try and harry and hurry Manchester United's back line, back line and how much they're going to say, look, we need to sit in our shape. We need to be hard to beat, be hard to break down and cause problems for Manchester United because the talent they've got is, is phenomenal. Atier with the throw. Mason launches the ball forward again. And here is uh, Maria Torres' daughter. One of the five Manchester United changes today and a player that has had success in this competition, part of the Chelsea side that won it back in 2018. But yeah, first uh, opportunity for her to get into a crossing position and Lewis wise to making absolutely sure that that right foot, which is such a considerable weapon, isn't able to deliver, at least at the first time of asking for United, is Russo. Torres Dotte, Nelson, this is Garcia, who wants a corner kick and gets one as it's poked behind by McKenna. It'll be really important here for, for Lewis to try and work out these set pieces nice and early because Katie Zellum has got a fantastic delivery. And the longer that they can keep Manchester United at bay for, the better. The last thing that Lewis needs right now is to concede an early goal. It is the Manchester United skipper who will deliver the game's first set piece. And Whitehouse will be slightly relieved that that ball does end up safely in her grasp. Definitely relieved, confident for her to come and try and claim it. I think she could have probably claimed it as opposed to try to punch, but luckily for her, she, she managed to get it at the second attempt. And that's what you want for your goalkeeper. You want someone that's going to come and be dictate the, the, everything that comes into the, into the penalty box and come and make sure she comes and makes claims. So that'll do her confidence no end of good, I'm sure. Her contribution to Lewis this season has been significant since joining from Bristol City. Millie Turner, one of uh, three survivors of the Manchester United side that uh, played here back in December 2018, a 2-0 win that Siobhan was part of. Letizia. Battier. We'll have to settle for the throw off. Nat Johnson. He didn't start the 3-1 defeat last weekend by London City Lionesses. The first league game this season she's not been involved in from the off. Russo with admirable tenacity, but it wasn't enough to retain possession. Lewis hoping that that might be a first opportunity for them to break, but Letizia is back in position. Well, that's loose, and Kraft can capitalise. Lewis working really hard here to, to break down any kind of movement that Manchester United are trying to create being really high on the press, any loose balls, they're there, they're working relentlessly to try and make sure that if they don't win the first ball, they win the second ball. And they've been effective when they've regained possession as well. well Ali Mason is playing a little bit deeper today than she has been in very recent weeks, but she's a hugely versatile player. They will need her at times, Lewis, you would imagine, to get into attacking positions. 
when you're in form in front of goal, any chances you can create, create, you want them to come the way of that player in particular, especially when they're likely to be at a premium. Most definitely, she scored four goals in the last round, and that's, that's phenomenal for, for any player at any level in any game. Um, so they'll want her as high up the pitch as possible, I'm sure. Here's Kraft, setting Johnson away. In from Johnson, here's the game's first opportunity. It came the way of Kirsty Barton, and that is a stupendous piece of defending to make sure that Lewis didn't snatch an early lead. Brilliant play from Lewis here. The ball across from Johnson was fantastic. Barton there coming in at the back post, but Maria Thoris dot here, phenomenal defending. As you said, the way she slides across there, preventing what could be a very difficult save for, for Mary Earps and out for a corner, but really positive play from Lewis in these opening couple of minutes. Amelia Hazard with the first Lewis corner of the game. The one that United have not been able to deal with, Kraft is trying to make something of the situation. And eventually steered just off target by Hazard. But another anxious moment for the WSL team. A very anxious moment and a well-worked set piece. Getting it into those kind of areas, it looks a little bit breezy there. Making the most of potentially a little bit of indecision in the box. Loads of bodies around, it makes it hard to clear and Hazard just snatched her shot. That's one of the things for Lewis. If you're going to get opportunities, you need to make Mary Earps work. You need to hit the target because chances, as you said earlier, will be at a premium. Although they've had two since we said that. They have indeed. <laughs> Comfortably through to White House. Manchester United have been served notice of Lewis's intentions. And I'd imagine Mark Skinner would have sent them out there reminding them that there would be that initial flurry from the home side who who want to demonstrate that they are capable of mixing it with the with the more illustrious names in the game they will do but at the same time sometimes as a player when you go into these kind of games you can think that they're just going to sit sit back sit deep make it hard to break down shut up shop and you're going to have all the possession and it's going to be difficult to break them down. So that gives you a kind of slightly different mindset that if when you turn up, they're coming out of you, they're flying out the box, they're putting you under pressure and they're creating chances. So it's how you then potentially change that mindset and say, look, we need to step up a gear, gear here. And if they are committing bodies forward, how do we find the gaps that they're leaving behind? Letizia with the ball forward. And that's a decent looking cross and it's got a finish. And Manchester United are in front. Alessia Russo with the darting run to the near post and nothing that Sophie Whitehouse could do about it. Just eight minutes played and Manchester United already in front. It's Alessia Russo what, doing exactly what she does week in, week out for Manchester United. Not sure if the positioning of Whitehouse, she gambled that the ball was going to come all the way across goal. Didn't uh, didn't expect that Russo was going to get that touch there. So she'd already gone back across to her far post. I think she should have held her ground at that near post space where you want to be for a near post delivery. I think she'd have made a comfortable save. I think she'll be frustrated by that. Well, having survived a couple of anxious moments, Manchester United it is who get the game's early goal. And if there were any nerves if there was any concern about just how difficult today might prove to be then that will help the favorites settle down nicely it will and that's exactly like we were saying to start with chances will be at a premium and had lewis taken one of those chances early doors it would have changed the game completely they can then shut up shop they can work hard to to be difficult to break down but manchester united are ruthless and clinical and we'll have a point to prove themselves after surrendering top spot in WSL last weekend with a, a defeat at Chelsea in a performance which was not up to the standard that they've been setting for themselves. Here comes Barton looking for an immediate Lewis response and Boris daughter again is across to do the defending when required. Yeah, great play here from Barton, does really well. It's a fantastic ball down that channel to open up, I think. Lewis have done well to recognise the gaps that have been left by Manchester United at the moment. They've recognised that their fullbacks will want to attack at every moment. So they're the positions that you can get in behind them and causing problems for Thoris Dottier. And both times she's managed to get back and make very good defending challenges. 
in from Hazard, who caused confusion with the last set piece. Craft unable to hold it up this time. The clearance is blocked by Stops. And Nasser is claiming counter claim for the throw. No one thought to pay attention to whether or not the ball had gone out of play. Manchester United free kick is the ultimate outcome. I think a few Lewis players were still wrapped up with trying to claim for a penalty there. I'm not sure whether a player got slightly dragged down to the ground. I think it would have been very weak. Um, but I don't think there's too much complaining about that free kick against Amelia Hazard then on, on Martha Thomas. Forward from Letizia. Garcia was the target and may yet ultimately end up in possession. Can't quite direct a, a pass back into the path of Torres Dotti. Tissier considers her options. Quite happy for United to have the, the ball in defensive positions, Lewis. So they've retreated to try and make things a little bit more difficult once United break into their half. Letizia. I'll see her on the move, but Whitehouse timed her arrival well. Confident goalkeeping there on the front foot, ready to come out and support and prevent any opportunity there for, for Garcia after conceding that goal where she'll probably be frustrated that she gambled on it going across towards the far post. It'll really help her confidence to make that kind of claim, as simple as it does look as a goalkeeper after conceding. You want to get on the ball as soon as possible afterwards. Yeah, Mark Skinner will be more than happy with the way that his side has started the game, dictating uh, possession in terms of the control of the ball, and they've got that early goal. Here's Nelson, the Norwegian international playing for Manchester United for the, the first time. She has been involved in the squad a couple of times recently without getting on the field. Zeller. Work this nicely. Right side, mate. Get right side. Thomas. Yeah, eventually, the ball beats her out of play. Just got a little nudge, which made things all the more awkward. Was well defended there in the end by Mason. It's that predicament of your best goal scorer and the, the player that scored four goals in the last round, but also one of your better defenders. Where do you put her on the pitch? Happy Mother's Day, by the way, Siobhan. Uh, did you get breakfast in bed from your three-year-old? Unfortunately not. I did get a couple of cards, though. That is a nightmare that is in your future, no doubt. Not too distant, perhaps. A three-year-old and, and a six-month almost old. I'll be hoping for a few breakfast in beds to come. Booth will be already contemplating what he might be able to, to do to, to change the momentum in the game. It is a big step up, isn't it? It is a, a huge goal. 17 places might not sound like a lot, the, the disparity between them, but from middle of the championship to top of, of WSL. Yeah, it most definitely is, I think, the gap. Yeah, we might get another demonstration of it here in from Thomas. And well claimed by Whitehouse. Another one there, well claimed by Whitehouse. She's got to be a, a, a strong figure in, in between those posts and in that six-yard box for Lewis if they're going to be successful. And if United start to get a couple to try and keep this, this team in the game. But as you were saying, the, the, the golfing quality and the, the golf between Championship and WSL is, is huge. For me, getting bigger all the time, even within the WSL, the top half of it, the top four potentially in the rest of the league, that the investment and the, the improvement that's been made is, is incredible and it's brilliant, but it's also important that, that those teams that are lower down still continue to invest, still continue to improve and, and improve the quality of the championship as well. 
Well, Mason able to, to see that one safely out of play for a goal kick. It was something actually that the Lewis chief executive, Maggie Murphy, was talking about this week. I think you know, a lot of people know about the, the equality that there is at Lewis, the same funding, the same resources made available to both the, the men's and women's team. It is, it is unique, it is progressive, and it's sustainable in terms of a business model for them. You know, the, the money they generate through sponsorship, the money they generate from the local community who are heavily invested in what they do uh, makes it in an incredibly well-run club that can compete at championship level but in terms of the investment that some of the more familiar and established names get from from benefactors they just can't get close to that and that is uh, as, as you just described Siobhan a reason that's maybe the, the disparity that the, the gulf between the championship and, and WSL if, if anything is, is getting larger at the moment yeah, most definitely. And I think it, it's a fantastic setup that they've got down at Lewis and the way they're working, it works for them brilliantly. Um, so credit to them and, and, and the way they've been investing in the club, the investment they've got in this pitch. Um, you can see today the playing surface is outstanding. They've got a grant from, from the, the, the Premier League um, pitch funding system. Someone might correct me if I'm wrong there. But it's brilliant, and that helps you to develop as a team. If you've got a great surface to play on, you can play great football, attract people to come and watch, and, and that's brilliant. But it means that Manchester United can enjoy their surroundings a little bit more than you did just over four years ago when, when things here weren't quite as uh, as friendly as they might otherwise have been. Here's Russo, the goal scorer, looking to turn provider. And the flag, though, is up as it's uh, swept away by Mason. A good defending again by Mason. She's been really important in this back line for Lewis in this this opening quarter of an hour and as we said the reason why she's she's playing a little bit deeper today but yes I remember getting stuck in the mud in the, in the goal mouth in the game four years ago and we actually it was horrific weather we actually had to warm up on the pitch behind or uh, well, the park should I say the behind the pitch um, which wasn't all that fun but as I said, the progression of the women's game is, is what we're looking at. And it, it's, it's brilliant to see how, how much they've advanced over the last few years. Header one by Turner, back forward, off stops. This is Johnson. McKenna, caught in possession. Russo looking to capitalise. And opted to go for goal herself when Borisa was available and that might have been the better of the two decisions. Yeah, she hasn't had a lot of opportunities yet, so when, you've, when you're when you a natural goal scorer, you find yourself between the two centre-backs and you take your touch out of feet in front of goal. You're going to try and open up and get a shot away, which is exactly what she did. Didn't connect as well as she'd want to, but a confidence builder for her, I'm sure. Turner with a brave header, helped on further by Nelson. Thomas with the layoff. And now she's in pursuit of a pass from Zellum, which just has a little too much heat on it. Lewis are doing a really good job at the moment of making the pitch feel compact. There's so many bodies around, they're, they're pressing really well, they're working really hard. If they want to keep Manchester United at bay, they need to keep doing that. Manchester United need to spread the pitch out a little bit more, use the wings, keep their wide players out wide so it stretches that Lewis back line at the moment. It's quite comfortable for them. Mary Earps has not seen much of the ball in the last few minutes. Familiarising touch for her before finding Letizia. Down by Kraft. Here's Zellum. Turner, one of the survivors of Manchester United's inaugural season, the, the last time that these two sides met. Thomas is in, but the flag is once again raised. A brilliant ball there by Katie Zellum. But frustrating from Manchester United's perspective that they can't hold the line and look along it and make sure they stay on side but brilliant defending from Lewis again down that side where Ellie Mason's playing keeping United very quiet and twice this season Mark Skinner has been named the WSL manager of the month in October and December 
during which time his side were unbeaten and challenging right at the very top of the table. There is a, a two-point deficit now to, to Chelsea and a far from straightforward scrap, not just in terms of who finishes top, but in terms of the, the Champions League places because Manchester City and Arsenal right there in contention as well. United have objectives to complete the first piece of major silverware that is on the list but so too is qualifying for elite European competition for next season I think as well it's not just getting into that top three because obviously there's three places the top two are the ones that go through to a to the further stage of the Champions League if you finish third and you've got to go through that qualification process it's difficult we've seen that from Manchester City the past couple of years we saw them lose to, to Real Madrid and not even qualify for the for the group stage of the Champions League so every single team wants to finish in that top two I think it's safe to say Chelsea are now favourites to win the league but Arsenal Manchester United and Manchester City will all be looking for that second position Nelson for Garcia. Not afraid to go backwards, Manchester United, in search of an alternative route forwards. Zellum. Torres Dotte. Nelson for Letizia. Russo trying to get the better of McKenna and has managed to do so and is alert to the options around her it was nicely worked by Manchester United but didn't quite produce a goal scoring opportunity no I think Barisa was trying to be a little bit clever there with the setback I think you spoke before about Russo potentially passing to, to Boa Risa in a better opportunity. I think where she drove in on goal there, Russo should have just let fly with the shot. I think that was her opportunity to, to take that shot. But more positive play from, from Manchester United. Lucia Garcia has got McKenna backpedalling. It's cleared up to Kraft and maybe that's something that Lewis can build from. United have, have demonstrated their tenacity in in the challenge as well. And now Garcia up against McKenna once more. Well, it was a nice idea and a pretty astute manoeuvre, but Whitehouse out together. Yeah, she's a very clever player, Garcia, but doesn't naturally play out wide on this left wing. And we were talking before about needing a bit more whip to stretch the Lewis back line. She's coming very central to play. Um, and that's, I think that's making it a bit easier for Lewis to defend. They're doing really well. Yes, they're coming in field. They're pushing her in there. And, and they're making it a lot more compact. And they're doing a brilliant job of keeping them quite quiet at the moment. Zellum losing out, but Nelson into regain possession for Manchester United. who have won 10 of their last 13 games. The defeat, though, against Chelsea is one from last weekend that no doubt will have been hurting. And would have been a cloud that needed to be dealt with before they could focus fully on this afternoon. Now, yeah, though, an injury that uh, is of a, a more immediate worry for those Manchester United players. Yeah, she seemed to be pointing to and, and poking her hamstring and shaking her head at, at Boarisa, who was speaking to her, which obviously doesn't look too promising. And she hasn't had a lot of game time recently. It's obviously her first start for United. She will not want to leave the pitch, but at the same time, it's not an injury you want to make worse. There are plenty of options that Manchester United have on the bench. Yes, it's not ideal for, for her, but... If you're struggling with a, with a slight hamstring injury, it could be wise to just take her off at the moment. Yeah, the cup competitions have presented Vilda Barisa with the lion's share of her first team starts this season. In fact, she has started all seven in the uh, in the, the cup and the, the League Cup. As for Lisa Nolson, well, we've 
seen very little of her until today and this will be a huge frustration if she has to depart and can play no further part having waited so long to to get an opportunity in a Manchester United shirt having joined from the Norwegian side Bran in January and you can see just how devastated she is that her first Manchester United appearance is going to be a relatively brief one and you can tell that it must be fairly fairly serious for her because as a player when you're making your debut if you can feel something that's a little bit tight but you know that you can probably push on through it you will do so for her hopefully it's nothing too bad but not not a good sign for Manchester United but as I said plenty of options on the bench you can see there I think it, it'll be Hayley lad that will come on and make a fairly like for like change really yeah should be able to slot straight in even if uh, for the time being Manchester United are going to have to continue with with 10 Hayley lad was one of the quintet of players that dropped out of the starting lineup today She's a brilliant player for me, Hayley Ladd. I love watching her play. She just does the basics really well. She's a player that is really effective and you don't always recognise what she's doing on the pitch until she's not there. And then you realise that she's not there. Yeah, she does fulfil that perhaps sometimes underappreciated role. Russo fulfils a responsibility that gets an awful lot of appreciation, sticking the ball in the back of the net and she's forced cleverly to turn it behind for a corner. Player whose goal separates the sides, her tenth of the season in all competitions, Alessia Russo. A player that's really growing into herself in the last couple of years. She's, she's been brilliant at Manchester United, brilliant for England as well. We all know how well she did at those European Championships, that audacious goal that she scored. Um, but yeah, scoring week in, week out, being clinical, being effective, also creating assists. She's, she's been brilliant for Manchester United. So confirmation, Hayley Ladd on Nalsson off with injury. Manchester United with a corner being delivered by Zellen. Thomas flicking it on, but flicking it behind for a goal kick. Not the most well worked of corners, but um, well defended by Lewis. Organised. And they'll be pleased that they've, they've managed to restrict Manchester United, given the goal between the clubs in league status, in, in the number of internationals that you've got on the pitch, they've restricted them to, to minimal opportunities. And Sophie Whitehouse has had to make a few claims. She hasn't really had to make too many big saves. Forward by Barton, trying to find Hazard. Barton, one of those who did have the early opportunity for Lewis to to get themselves in front. And Turner has been penalised for some grappling and it'll be a Lewis free kick. Really strong play there by Hazard. Did well to get her body between Turner and the ball. As you said, Millie Turner just doing a little bit too much grappling. And this is where Lewis needs to take advantage of set-piece situations. They need a good delivery into the box to cause, cause problems for Manchester United. Well, Hazard is the player. Um, set piece duty for Lewis. It's well defended by Zellum because that was into an awkward area that Manchester United were momentarily struggling to defend, and Mary Earps wasn't sure whether to stick or twist. No, I think she made the right decision in sticking. I don't think she was ever going to come and claim that ball, but for Lewis, it's a brilliant delivery in. You've got to get someone across that near post space. You've got to get someone making that, that connection. It's too easy for Katie Zellem to be able to make that first connection on the ball. And Mason with the challenge on Thomas. It's resulted in a Manchester United free kick. I just wonder how long in this game Mason is going to remain in a more defensive role and at what point Lewis might think hang on a second if we are going to give Manchester United a fright we need the player most likely to deliver that scare in an area of the field to do so Letizia Thomas turning but cleared by Cleverly Boris Dottir Arisa couldn't attain possession, but she'll get another opportunity to create something now for Garcia. He's up against McKenna. And now McKenna gets some help, and she needed it from Barton. 
Barisa. And was cleverly with the block. And Manchester United will have to settle for another throw. Again, though, great work, great from Lewis. McKenna struggling to, to hold off Garcia. And it was Barton that came back and doubled up with her. Stobbs has done well, pinched it away from Ladd and has made excellent progress. And Kraft, can she get there? Not quite, wouldn't have mattered. Flag is up. It's a great break, though, for Lewis, and that's what they need to maximise when they do get possession if Manchester United are out of position, if they've committed both their full-backs forward to the attack, can you be direct? Can you be ruthless when you make those attacks and, and get in behind it and, and get an opportunity on goal? Free kick taken from the wrong position. Stacey Follix is the referee today, by the way. Letizia. She has been the the starter of many of United's forward movements. Thomas and Battier between them. They're able to keep United, though, in an offensive area. And it was that kind of fall over the top and releasing Battier that, that led to the goal that separates the sides. But United haven't created anything clear-cut since that eighth-minute goal for Alessia Russo. They haven't, and I think the compactness of Lewis, especially down that channel, has really, really thwarted Manchester United. Badje likes to over, do overlapping runs, combine with her wide player and get in behind and get deliveries in. But she hasn't had the space to be able to do that because Lewis have been working so hard to close down those gaps. The PFA Women's Player of the Month for last month, on her Battier, which is... Uh, a pretty notable achievement for somebody who plays at right back to have caught the eye to such an extent. A brilliant achievement, and I think if you'd ask most Manchester United fans, they'd be surprised that she hasn't won it once before or twice before. Um, she's an outstanding player, a, a huge talent, and one that I'm sure Manchester United will be staying, hopes and stays at the club for a long time to come. Zellan for Garcia. First touch to set up a, a chase with McKenna. It has gone behind for a goal kick. Well, we, we know from our spies in the Lewis camp just uh, how energetic Rebecca McKenna is, how much ground she gets through going up and down. That right-hand side in particular for Lewis, she's got her hands full up against Lucia Garcia, hasn't she? She definitely has, although I think... We've seen the goal go in there from Thomas, um, from Russo, sorry. I think Garcia's making it a little bit easier for McKenna because she's coming so central. If she came out wide and clung to this touchline, she'd open up the spaces, make McKenna have to make a decision. Does she come out and disconnect from her back line or does she stay connected and stay in field and give her the space to get on the ball? At the moment, by Garcia coming in central, she's making the decision easy for McKenna. She just stays in, stays compact, stays connected and can stay with her team. Russo trying to flick it on. And the ball cannons. Hoffer as Stobbs looks to bring it away. This is Hazard. Well, keeping themselves in touch in the contest. A Lewis side that has lost four of its last six games in all competitions. Certainly the FA Cup has provided them with some relief from a, a dramatic drop-off in in league form since mid-January they've lost four of five in the championship having won four of the the previous five this is Park McKenna hasn't had too many opportunities to to test Lucia Garcia at the other end of the field and on that occasion she's done enough to win a free kick and provide Lewis with a, a moment of promise. Definitely a moment, a potential of a moment of promise, and this is where the delivery needs to be good. The delivery from their last set piece was fantastic, but nobody made that run across the near post space. You need the runners as well as the delivery, and this is where uh, Lewis is training week in, week out, where they work on set pieces has got to come to fruition. Well, Amelia Hazard is one of those who's been involved in every league game for, for Lewis. She's a, a vital cog 
in their operation. She's had an opportunity to find her range from set pieces. Now, how seriously can she test United's defensive resolve? Hazard with the free kick. Well, Kraft was in there. And Mary Earps, who's not been called into too much action so far, was very alert to the danger. Yeah, smart stop. Quickly off her line. Prevented any, any further problems from happening when there's so many bodies, as we've seen, around the box, around the ball. It can easily start cannoning off people. So great goalkeeping from Mary Earps. Just calmly come out, quick change of pace, clear that ball. Get hold of it. Just hearing, by the way, from the fourth official, Aaron Ford, that officially the, the goal that separates the sides may well be going down as a Rian cleverly own goal. The decisive touch off her rather than Alessia Russo. I'm not sure she'd necessarily want that own goal attributed to her, but it does make a little bit more sense as to why the goalkeeper was going towards that far post space took the nick off cleverly and diverted it therefore into the into the near post which kind of wrong footed her I'd suggest that the fourth official doesn't seek her out to pass on that information himself uh, when the half time whistle blows yeah I'm sure she'll be happy enough to pass it on to Rousseau Hazard and Zellum tussling on the edge of the penalty area and Whitehouse happy to watch that sail behind for a goal kick. I guess Lewis will feel. And Scott Booth, having seen his side win just three of the last seven on this ground, that if they can get to half-time just the 1-0 down, then that at least gives them something to work with. Another goal for Manchester United, another goal for Mark Skinner's side in the next six and a half, seven minutes or so would completely change the complexion of the cup tie. Most definitely, that their target will be to get to half time at 1 0. They can grab a goal that they're brilliant, but it keeps them completely in the game. They can work on their, their tactics, they can work on any tweaks that they might need to make at half time to, to slightly change, to maybe get a little bit more effective higher up, maybe change their set piece structure to, to cause Manchester United more problems. But as you said, a goal for Manchester United now before half time is, is an absolute game changer. Northern Ireland international Rebecca McKenna with the throw. Ahead of Thoris Dotter. Barton in quickly ahead of Hayley Ladd, but can do no more than poke the ball out of play. Manchester United's only ever previous visit to the dripping pan was a, a 2 0 win in December 2018 when these sides met at the end of that championship season. United won 5-0 at Lee Sports Village and at the end of the game were presented with the championship trophy. So, whilst their meetings have, have only been infrequent, one previously of particular noteworthiness, flag is up against Amber Keegan stops. I remember that second match well because it was the last game of the season and I actually missed the game because I ruptured my ligaments in my ankle the day before the, the final game of the season. So, was on crutches lifting a trophy, which is brilliant. You contributed enough, I think, during the, the course of that campaign to warrant getting your hands on the silverware, even if it was less than ideal circumstances. Most definitely. Is Millie Turner, who did play both games against Lewis in that season. There is still a core of players at, at Manchester United that were part of that inaugural campaign and can't help but feel that that has been critical to the, the progress, the, the momentum to keep that, that spirit of how things started together along with the newer faces, those that have contributed the greater quality required to compete up near the top of WSL. Definitely, especially those players that have come through the youth team setup at Manchester United as well. Garcia. 
cleverly well positioned. Hope further away by Barton, but Thoris Dottir is going to keep the ball in play. Manchester United think there could be something happening for them here. Borisa. Letizia. Wants not to use Tovas, went direct towards Russo instead. This is Zellum, whose header was diverted behind rather than in front of Vilde Borisa. And now Zellum again is trying to make something happen. The Manchester United captain. Not quite for Garcia, it's a, a challenge which she thinks was a little bit more robust than necessary. United will have to settle for a throw. I think it was a brilliant challenge from the Lewis player, completely won the ball. Yes, kind of took Garcia out to finish with, but nothing nothing dangerous. Russo, Flores Dottir. Back towards her from Garcia. Alessia Garcia, Alessia Russo. Maya Letizia. Well, that would have been quite the strike to put Manchester United 2-0 in front. It would have been a brilliant strike had that been on target and, and made its way into the back of the net. But I think that's that's a great sign for Lewis. The fact that they're limiting Manchester United to shots from distance from their centre-backs is a real positive. And going in at half-time, I'm sure Scott Booth will be saying that. Look, we're causing them frustration we're not letting them play the type of football they want to play you've got to take the positives from it but also you're a goal down it's a cup competition you've got to be clinical when you get that chance and they will get one Letizia back doing what uh, she is a little bit more familiar with uh, orchestrating things defensively her only Manchester United goals actually came on her debut when she scored twice in a 4-0 win over Reading back in September not a bad way to make your debut Man of the match performance as well. Well, her partnership with Millie Turner is, has been another important factor for Manchester United, hasn't it? At the heart of that defence, to have that sort of the continuity, the consistency, and, and the, the, the level of skill that those two players possess in partnership. It has, but it's really interesting. Obviously, you've got Eva Mannion back fit now. She'll be wanting to, 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 to progress especially with her international career now with Republic of Ireland. You've got Tunkara, who's, who's another player with, with France, will want to be getting back into that national team. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, talent in there and competition for places. So potentially that's been making them play better as well. Thomas for Zeller. Letizia for Turner. Who's only missed one game in all competitions this season for Manchester United. Setting Garcia away. Reacquaints herself with McKenna. And McKenna can only briefly halt Manchester United. Thought his daughter taking aim and will have to settle for a corner kick. Brilliant defending from McKenna again. She's done really well this first half against Garcia. She's a really fast, tricky, skillful, wide player and can play direct as well. She's a full international and McKenna is also an international herself, but she's she's done brilliantly to keep her quiet and, and to limit her opportunities. Well, the hush around the dripping pan as uh, Zellen delivers the corner. Thomas for Russo. Not comprehensively away, and Zellem can prepare to deliver again, and it's an inviting-looking one. White House came and grasped at the ball. I might be relieved to discover that uh, the decision is goal kick. Yeah, as I said at the beginning of the game, it's always nice when your goalkeeper's confident, when they can come and and claim balls, but that was a really difficult ball to come and claim. It's a fantastic delivery from Katie Zellum. Sometimes you just need to stay on your line and let your defenders defend. And I think she did actually get quite lucky there that no Manchester United player ma managed to make contact towards the back of the net. Forward by Batier. Here's Russo up against Cleverly. Russo has been penalised for the lunge across her opponent. Yeah, I'm not too, too, not sure. Russo could have too much to complain with there. The free kick against Cleverly, an opportunity for Lewis to get it back up to the other end. 
into four additional minutes at the end of the first half. Much of that time a consequence of the, the treatment that uh, Lisa Nelson received before having to be withdrawn with an injury, the Manchester United debutant. Garcia. Craft has it. This is Torres Dotte. Manchester United that as we approach half-time there is a, a general hush around a, a sold-out dripping pan a huge interest in this game tickets sold very quickly too much to get excited about since Manchester United got themselves in front and Risa wasn't too far away from getting a clean shot away on target better play though from Manchester United getting the ball into those wide areas getting the ball in behind and Russo, normally the one you expect to be on the end of it, turning provider and, and cutting it back across goal, but again, well defended by Lewis to, to prevent a full clean strike on goal. Thomas with the misplaced pass forwards. Johnson unable to escape the attentions of Letizia. Letizia has done really well since she's signed for Manchester United, really grown into that position in one of the top teams in the league. As we said before, the competition for centre-back places is, is huge and she's one that's absolutely nailed down that position. Ellie Mason with the throw for Lewis. Added forward by Borisa. For a moment, like there might have been an opportunity to counter quickly there for Manchester United, but the decision wasn't taken. Instead, Batier for Martha Thomas up against Wardlaw, one of the, the players on loan from Chelsea with Lewis this season. Here's Thoris Dottier. Thomas for Zellum. idea was nice enough execution not quite up to the standard required yeah execution not quite right but at the same time you've got to give credit to Lewis for the way that they're they're playing the way that they're defending how compact they are they're making it difficult for Manchester United to thread these balls these one and two touch passes round corners there's so many bodies in the way because they've stayed connected to each other they've stuck to their game plan they've stayed in formation and stayed in their right shape They've, they've made it really difficult for Manchester United to get too much possession. Well, the boot was high on Hayley Ladd. The apology follows from Kirsty Barton. That doesn't seem entirely sure that apology suffices, that further action might have been required from Stacey Fullix, the referee. Whenever you get a, a boot to the face, it's not nice dangerous hence hence the yellow card it is the first caution of the game it goes the way of uh, Lewis's Kirsty Barton for failing to take due care and attention well, we've played the four minutes of stoppage time that we were expecting be one final opportunity for Manchester United to apply some pressure for Risa Ladd. Just a little too much on it for Garcia. And that should be Lewis safely through to half time without conceding again. It should be. And a, a fantastic opportunity for him to go in, to regroup, to get a breather, <laughs> most importantly, because they've worked so hard in this first half. It's, it's been relentless how hard they've been working, as, as I said before, their, their commitment to stick to their game plan, to stay connected to one another, to limit the spaces for Manchester United, that, that they'll need that rest at half-time to come out and be able to do it all over again, albeit with a goal, hopefully, for them in the second half. 
Well, Letizia did well actually to to regain any sort of uh, retain any sort of balance under pressure from Kraft there, but it it will be a Manchester United free kick. Not sure where this extra 90 seconds has come from, but still we go on. Borisa. Flores dot it. Phil de Borisa. Katie Zellen. Not been able to flex their superiority in terms of skill and strength Manchester United in this first half in the way that they would have liked to have done credit must go to Lewis for that and they have to make do with a 1-0 lead at the interval the WSL side against their championship hosts credited as an own goal of Rian cleverly when the cross from Onabadie intended for Alessio Russo made its way past Lewis goalkeeper Sophie Whitehouse when United were in front on eight minutes, it looked like they might run away very quickly with the FA Cup tie. But Lewis, who had their opportunities before Manchester United scored, notably through Barton and Hazard, have stayed in contention and have reached the half-time interval of this women's FA Cup quarter-final with a score of Lewis nil, Manchester United one. Well, welcome back to our coverage from the dripping pan of a, a women's FA Cup quarter-final where Manchester United are leading Lewis by a goal to nil at half-time. But not entirely satisfied with the way things are going, judging by the fact that they are about to introduce Ella Toon to the action ahead of the second 45 minutes. One of those that dropped out of the, the starting lineup ahead of the, the game today. Siobhan Chamberlain, former Manchester United goalkeeper, is alongside me. What might Ella Toon be able to contribute that Manchester United haven't had thus far? Potentially a little bit of creativity, linking the play from, from back to front, trying to find Alessia Russo a bit higher up the pitch. I think Russo wasn't involved as much as we'd want to have seen her involved this, uh, as a Manchester United um, player wasn't involved as much as they'd have wanted her to be but Ella Toon's brilliant at finding those gaps finding those pockets and then playing it through to Russo um, so I'm sure that's what Mark Skinner's brought her on to hopefully do for them. Uh, Lucia Garcia is the player to make way who had a, a long running first half battle with the uh, Lewis right wing back Rebecca McKenna so McKenna has seen off one opponent but has uh, replaced one high-ranking international with another ahead of the second half. It'd be but interesting because we obviously spoke about Garcia coming more central and not holding out this kind of wide left wing position that Leah Golton tends to do for Manchester United so well, um, making it more difficult for, for, for Lewis and stretching them. Toon is a similar kind of player. So if Toon is, if Ella Toon is going to go into that position out on this wide right, she's someone that wants to come in field and join in. So it'd be interesting if she does it, do it a little bit differently to, to Garcia or if it is like for like. Well, the lowest ranked side left in the FA Cup. Well, still very much in the tie. Manchester United unable to build upon the eighth minute goal that has gone down as a Rian cleverly owned goal. Initially was awarded to Alessia Russo, who is the player who gets us underway at the start of this second half. And no doubt Manchester United will be eager to score early in the second, just as they did in the first, to make sure that this doesn't become an attritional and blustery afternoon on the south coast. 
Immediately, Badie into an attacking position and immediately producing another stunning cross that Thomas wasn't too far away from steering beyond the reach of Whitehouse. That's a good save, though, from the Lewis goalkeeper. It's a really smart start from Whitehouse, but as you said, the delivery from Ona Baggio is fantastic. Time and time again, she picks out players, and Martha Thomas just gets a connection. Didn't really make it too difficult for, for Whitehouse, a smart stop for her, but from Martha Thomas, you'd expect her to get a bit more power on that, find its way into the corners and make it a little bit more difficult for the, for the goalkeeper. Craft with the uh, quizzical expression as to why she wasn't awarded a free kick for that tangle with Maya Letizia. Here is Letizia, who's given the freedom for the time being to send the ball forward for Russo, who tries to flick it into the path of Toon. Alessia Russo, soon available out wide. First involvement for Ella Toon, wonderful cross. And again, Whitehouse with the save to deny Martha Thomas twice in quick succession at the start of this second half. Another great stop from Whitehouse there and another chance for, for Thomas. I thought this one was destined to be nestled in the back of the net. A brilliant delivery from Ella Toon. Just didn't quite get the power from Thomas on it. And brilliant footwork from Whitehouse to get across the, the width of the goal to challenge her at that, that near post space and make a smart stop. Well, Zellen to deliver the corner kick. Decides instead to go short for Toon. Here's Una Badie lining up a, an effort which wasn't too far away from arcing its way back on target. Well, we know how devastating she can be in terms of delivering chances for others. She wasn't uh, too far away from taking one for herself. No, it's a really well-worked corner kick from Manchester United there, finding Ona Badje on her own at the edge of the box. Just couldn't quite wrap her foot around it and get the curl that would take it into that far corner. One of those in United Colours today that does have experience of going all the way in cup competition. She won the, the Spanish Cup with... Barcelona back in 2017. Here's Thomas, already heavily involved at the start of the second half with this tactical tweak, which has seen a switch from the right-hand side to the left. Play. Broken up by Johnson. It's Turner across for Manchester United, right place, right time, as she so often is. Is dot here for Thomas Russo. Well, that's a collision with White House, which is a painful one for the Manchester United striker. She managed to muscle away beyond Wardlaw, but then that was heavy contact between the two. It's good, strong goalkeeping from White House there. Committed to it early, was on the front foot, came out and got the ball, and the force of the two of them coming together. Makes it a real painful one. Yeah, just lost her boot with the contact from behind from Charlotte Wardlaw, which wouldn't have helped Alessia Russo if she had any thoughts whatsoever about avoiding that collision. I don't think I don't think there was any malice in there. No, no, no foul as such necessarily um, from Russo, as you said. Lost her lost her boot in the challenge beforehand. But brilliant goalkeeping, brave goalkeeping from Whitehouse to come out and, and make that claim. Whitehouse not the only Lewis player struggling because Amelia Hazard is uh, receiving treatment as well. And that is how she was hurt. Lots of innocuous challenges going on. Um, a good opportunity to get a couple of players seen to all at once. Well, it has been a fiercely competitive game and that appears to have been the, the Lewis approach and understandably so considering the, the golf in class in terms of the, the resources available to them. Side in mid-table in the, the championship that has been struggling for wins in league competition at least the the three recent victories they've had in the fa cup have
provided them with the encouragement that they've needed at the start of 2023, not least the 6-1 drubbing of Cardiff in the last round. And Mark Skinner's side have only had to play two games to reach this quarter-final stage. They too had a big win last time out against Durham of the Championship by five goals to nil. It's somewhat surprising that these two have only so far managed to score once between them, having previously managed 19 across their five combined games in the FA Cup. It's been a competition during which they have both had their prolific moments. Zelen for Borisa. A wonderful pass. Toon thought she was in, and Sophie Whitehouse just about judged the parameters of her penalty area correctly. She did, and, and you can say that she made a fantastic decision to come out there and to be able to make that claim. It's one of those difficult ones where it's bouncing right on the edge. It's do you come out, clear it all completely before it gets into the box, or do you wait for it to come so you can use your hands? And she just about made the right decision and was able to pounce on the, on, on the loose ball. Put the brakes on quickly enough. And suddenly there was a need to stop. Turner for Thuris Dottir for Manchester United. Thomas it is sending it all the way back to Earps. Here's Letizia. Away by McKenna. And overall it's been a, a really fruitful season for Manchester United in terms of that next stage of the progress. They've only lost twice in regulation. Both of those games in WSL home and away against Chelsea. They did lose a couple of games on penalties in the, the Conti Cup as well. But otherwise they have been tough to beat and more often than not have emerged victorious and that is why they are challenging right at the very top of WSL for the title and why they are amongst those very much in the, the hunt for the FA Cup, aiming to reach the semi-final for the first time, Manchester United. Two for Thomas. Zellum stepping in. Couldn't thread it through, though, to Russo, as well read by Wardlaw. And Lewis continuing the style that they were playing in the first half, where they're compact, hard to break down. Hard to find the gaps through the middle. Still working really hard at that and making the pitch look really small for Manchester United so they haven't got those those spaces to be able to play in. And those spaces we spoke about when Ella Toon came on, those spaces that she wants to be playing in, picking up the ball in, in, in the gaps. Well, the pass from Maya Letizia found Toon in an offside position, but very possibly Badier wouldn't have been. Flag though raised and whistle blowing. Before that, decision had to be made. I think that the referee and the assistant referee made the decision far too quickly then. They assumed that Ella Toon would take a touch, but she didn't, and, and Badger would have been in a brilliant position to get through on goal there. And an attempt to get behind the rooks and inspire them to turn this tie around. Haven't had a, a chance of note in the second half as yet, and now have some more defending to do as Russo sends Thomas away. Thomas with support from Barisa, who scored a lovely goal in the last round from a free kick that was off target from open play on that occasion. Off target, but much more promising. That's where Manchester United want to see Barisa picking the ball up around the edge of the box because she's got a great shot. She's got great ability technically on the ball to be able to manipulate it how she wants it, but she won't be pleased with that one firing over. You've got to make the goalkeeper work from there. That's been better from Manchester United in this second half, though. They have looked more threatening from the very first whistle. Thomas unable to thread it into the path of Toon. Mason was on hand to guide it safely back to her goalkeeper. Spent time with Tottenham and Birmingham Sophie Whitehouse without ever making a league appearance. Scott Booth bringing her to Lewis from Bristol City last summer. It's 
got a lot of writing in that notepad as well. Well, it's going to require something special. He's going to have to deep, very, dig very deep into the, the playbook. You feel if, uh, if Lewis are, are going to unsettle Manchester United on a regular basis, but there's nothing to say they won't be able to do at some point all the time that it remains just 1-0 to the WSL side and Letizia is forced to go back to her goalkeeper albeit no pressure applied to Mary Earps by Emily Craft no you can see the game plan it's about staying connected it's about not not leaving gaps and if Craft had gone then to try and charge down she leaves a gap for, for Manchester United to play in behind so it's about staying connected staying in shape and taking the right moments when as and when they come not trying to force it and and getting dragged out of position so far, it is a game plan that has kept Lewis in touch with Manchester United, despite their dominance of the ball. Zellum for Thoris Dottir is Thomas. Zellum under pressure from Hazard. Manchester United's only previous quarter-final, a 3-2 defeat by Reading. It's a competition that's not been kind to them since. Padier is a big reason as to why they're in front today and is looking to help extend the lead to in the reach of Berdisa. Not his dot it. Martha Thomas. Charged down by McKenna. And Stobbs can try and complete the clearance. Hasn't been allowed to do so. Oh, here's Badier. Another inviting delivery across the face of goal from Una Badier. Arguably didn't get the finish it deserved as Russo arrived. It's a brilliant ball from Boa out to find Badier, who's finding herself in much more space in this second half out in these wide right areas. She's getting higher up the pitch, getting deliveries in. And that one, Alessia Russo just couldn't get her toe on the end of it, but a fantastic delivery from Una Badier. Play for a Lewis throw, which Mason will take. Won the FA Youth Cup and the under 17 title during her time with Chelsea. Scored a goal in that Youth Cup final, did Ellie Mason. Barton, who's the player so far to have been booked, is penalised again for a foul on Thoris Dotte. Thankfully for her, that one wasn't worthy of a, of a booking. We would not like to see her sending off. The way Lewis are working at the moment would make it near on impossible if they were to go and play her down. I think you would have to be particularly partisan in Manchester United's favour if you thought that was anything more than a footballing accident. Oh. I'm, I'm not one to criticise referees or assistant referees, but we do see some strange decisions sometimes in the game. Here's Ladd, who came on in the first half as a, as a substitute for Manchester United, finds Maya Letizia. He's continuing her involvement in every game for United across WSL, FA Cup and League Cup this season. Toon, who is one of the two Manchester United goal scorers on their only previous visit to this ground. Barisa. Oh, saw one. Stobbs thinks she got enough of the ball. By the reaction of, of Barisa, she got enough of her foot as well. Um, always a difficult one when, when you get the ball and the foot. She may well have got the ball, but she definitely got, got Boa Risa as well. And it's always a painful one on the top of your foot there. From a Charlton Palace and Watford player, Amber Keegan stops in her first season with Lewis. Yeah. 
Zellan with the Manchester United free kick towards Russo. But only as far as Letizia, who has to go back to Torres Dotter, who retreats all the way back to her goalkeeper. Lily Turner now back in position, having gone forward for the set piece. Toon with a, a look of confusion as to exactly what had happened there that the senior opponent go to ground. And after a flying start to this second half, it's all become a bit disjointed. It has, and credit for that's got to go to Lewis for the way that they've set up, the way they've stayed connected, reduced at any kind of gaps for Manchester United to play in. As, as I said in the first half, their work rate's been phenomenal. And the way that they've stuck to the game plan and stayed connected with one another has been fantastic as well. Hopefully for them, this won't be a, won't be a serious injury. It looked like a kind of knee-to-knee -knee contact. So hopefully, as opposed to anything ligament-based, it's just a bit of bruising. Thoris Dotter, the Manchester United player, experiencing a moment of discomfort. Another delay to a game that's had a huge amount of focus on it this week. Not least because of Lewis uh, reaching out an open letter to the Women's Football Review, which is being chaired by Karen Carney, raising the subject of equal prize money across the men's and women's FA Cup competitions. Uh, the Women's Fund has actually gone up this season to three million pounds, but so too has the men's to, to nearly 20 million. And, and Lewis uh, amongst those who believe that those two numbers could at least be a little bit closer together. All part of the kind of thing that uh, Karen Carney is looking into, pulling together the opinions of those from across the women's game and talking about the best way forward for an area of the sport which has made such huge strides in recent times. The women's game it is developing rapidly. I think the, the, the victory of the Lionesses in the summer has seen an exponential growth this season of how popular it is and the interest in, in the women's game. And there is so much more improvement that can be made. Um, so yeah, we do want prize funds to be increasing, but there's, there's so much more as well. Um, that needs to go alongside that. Um, but it's definitely an exciting time to be involved in, in women's football in England right now. Coming on a, a player that has been part of that meteoric rise, not least because of her contributions for England over the years. Nikita Paris is about to be introduced. She is Manchester United's leading goal scorer in this competition this season with three in her two appearances. And also coming on Aoife Mannion, who has been making the slow and steady return to regular football since uh, suffering that second ACL injury of her career back in March of last year. Martha Thomas is one of those uh, going off to be replaced by Paris uh, Thorey's daughter, who we just saw receiving treatment. She makes way for Mannion to come on for a decent chunk of time in this second half in terms of re-familiarising herself with regular football. Yeah, it's great to see Aoife Mannion coming back in. She's, she'd started her career at Manchester United, a stint here really promisingly. And then obviously got that got that injury, which is, is really hard for any player when they get an ACL injury to, to be out for quite so long. But she's a player that Manchester United will hope will be coming back into, into flying form right now. And Lewis have made a change as well. A teenager on loan from Chelsea, Grace Palmer, has uh, made way for Izzy Dalton. This is one of the differences in the, in the difference between the, the championship and the, the WSL and especially the top of the WSL is, is the strength and depth of squads. You look at the changes that Manchester United are able to make, even the players that aren't in the squad right now. It's like for like, it's international quality across the board. Other clubs don't have the ability to do that. Two. Oh, clever little pass, Badiak. Full step, full step, full step, full step. 
Oh, ball was still in play. Manchester United appealing for a decision in their favour. Everybody stopped, assuming that Badier had failed to keep the ball in, and then Toon eventually is the whistle blowing for offside. But that was a bit of a scramble and a rare moment of uncertainty from Lewis, who have been so focused. Yeah, a scramble is definitely the way that I'd describe it. Ball hadn't fully gone out at all, and I think it was lucky that there's a claim that did it hit Rian Cleverly's arm there from Borarisa strike, blocking it from the goal. We don't have VAR, so the referee will never know whether to make that, that decision, but an absolute scramble that I'm sure Lewis will be grateful that he's landed at Whitehouse's foot for a, for a goal kick. Russo sending Paris away. But Nikita Paris can only guide it harmlessly into the arms of Whitehouse. And maybe a moment for Lewis just to catch their breath and compose themselves once again. Most definitely. They've done so well at doing that as well. They've been composed, they've been organised, they've been efficient in what they've needed to do. There hasn't been any kind of lacks of concentration at the moment, but this is where it gets more difficult. Mannion's first involvement is to send the ball back to goalkeeper Mary Earps. It's the third successive game in this competition that Manchester United are playing against championship opposition. They had to dig deep in round four to get the better of Sunderland by two goals to one, and they're having to do so again against Lewis in from two. Blocked by Cleverly. Nicely worked by Toon. In from Badier. Oh, outstanding. What a really well worked second Manchester United goal. The cross from Badier converted by Vilda Borisa. Manchester United 2 0 in front and surely now heading towards the semi finals for the first time. And that is definitely a goal worthy of taking you through to a semi-final of an FA Cup. A fantastic bullet header from Vilda Barisa, a player that hasn't been on the pitch for Manchester United as much as she'd want to. Great composure and, and, and patience from Ella Toon. Another brilliant delivery from Ona Badje, right onto the head of Barisa, who leaves Whitehouse with no chance of making that save after a, a really solid match she's had so far. But there was no chance in her making that save have been much more threatening in this second half of Manchester United and are deserving of the moment that has seen them double their lead midway through it. Maurice's fifth of the season in all competitions, her second in the FA Cup to go with the stunning free kick she scored in the last round, the 5-0 win over Durham. And that should now enable Manchester United to control the game and go through the gears as and when they feel necessary. The longer Lewis kept it at 1-0, the more difficult it made it for Manchester United, the more chance it gave Lewis of knowing it only takes one goal to get back into the game. Now they've got to come out at Manchester United. They've got to get on the front foot, start pressing, be a bit more expansive and create some opportunities, which then leaves gaps in behind. And for the, the, the fresh talent that's now come onto the pitch, makes it very difficult. And the trigger moments to see Leading goal scorer Ellie Mason moved further forward from her defensive berth was the concession of that second goal. There she is suddenly now adding a, a little bit of intensity to the the first line of the Lewis defence. We wondered when it might come. Here's Badier who has created both goals for Manchester United. In a really rich vein of form. Mentioned the, the player of the year award that she was given by the PFA for her endeavours last month. And we've had another demonstration of just how vital she is to Manchester United, not just in terms of what she can do defensively, but what she contributes going forward as well. Toon, let's sit back from Ladd. Zellum, little flick. Russo, bit of purpose about Manchester United and Alessia Russo all of a sudden. Paris providing some width, so too Letitia in from Nikita Paris straight at White House much more patient play there from Manchester United working it around the box committing bodies forward finding good areas to exploit 
just the quality on delivery wasn't good enough from Nikita Paris that time and it was a comfortable claim at that near post space from, from Whitehouse. Header one by Turner. Here comes Russo to ground under the challenge of Stobbs. Oh, that was a collision between Mannion and Mason, which Mason isn't convinced was accidental. I mean, I'm not sure how much deliberate contact there was to bring her to ground, but Mannion definitely knew where she was. Has it? Ellie Mason. Well, harmlessly across the face of goal. But she's given Lewis a little bit more aggression at the top end of the field all of a sudden. She has done, as has as, as Mannion, and we, we saw with that challenge there. You know where the player is, and as a defender, you need to block players' runs. Just need to make sure that, that you're effective in, in doing it legally, which the referee deemed Mannion to have done there. Scott Booth still contemplating how his side might turn this game around. Must have experience of uh, working in the media as well. Scott Booth did your job once upon a time. Siobhan, second toughest job in television broadcasting. I've listened to him do it as well. It's a brilliant job he did. I'm, thought, I'm sure he's a much better manager. Oh, dearie me. Erps with the error and punished. Emily Kraft gets Lewis back into the cup tie. Yes, a mistake from the Manchester United goalkeeper, but it needed the moment of quality to punish it. And Lewis have hope again. Lewis won Manchester United too. It's a fantastic finish from Kraft here. Overplaying out of the back from Manchester United. Brilliant pressure on Maria, it's made it difficult for her, but Kraft still has it all to do. And just dinked it over Maria into that top corner. An absolutely sublime finish, and one which has got them right back into this match. Stunning finish. Mason it was who applied the pressure on Erps, who can perhaps be excused on the basis that she's seen so little of the ball that she was caught a little cold by Ellie Mason, because no one else has been closing her down. She's had been able to be comfortable with the ball at her feet, and not on that occasion. And the the dual Irish and German national Emily Kraft, who who played her football in Germany until the age of 12, was born and brought up in Frankfurt, and scored a goal in the FA Cup to make things very interesting. It's cleverly across to put the ball out of play, just as Russo looked threatening once more. It looks like Mason making the move higher up the pitch has definitely worked for Lewis as it was her pressure on Mary Earps that, that caused the error and, and resulted in the goal. But be interesting the response that we now get from Manchester United as the last couple of games, when they've conceded, they've gone on to score again. And that's the response that they need today. Turner's pass beyond the reach of its intended destination. You can see Manchester United suddenly just a little bit more twitchy. Not able to hold on to the two-goal lead for very long. Not able to enjoy the, the cushion that that had provided them with. And I suppose the only question is, with 15 minutes and change to play, is whether or not Lewis could have altered their approach any earlier before conceding that second goal. Could they have unsettled Manchester United in a way that uh, might have produced that sort of error from Mary Earps at an earlier stage of the game? I think I think they've done it at the right time. Yes, you don't want to go 2-0 down to have to have it as that response, but I think you do it for any longer than 15, 20 minutes. I think Manchester United have the ability to, to pick passes and, and to pick the team apart. They stayed compact for a large proportion of the game and now they're using the opportunity to say, come on, we're going to come and have a go at you. Turner closed down by the goal scorer, Kraft. He joined Lewis from Eintracht Frankfurt last summer. Turner. That's 
to Letizia, who's been playing as a left back since Mannion came on. Hit United being pushed back here. Harris having to come deep. And she's been fouled by Izzy Dalton. It's a silly foul there from Dalton. She had Paris going backwards. They'd got bodies committed high up the high up the pitch. They were in a good position. It was a foul that didn't necessarily need to be made. Well, Kraft is a player who's had her problems with injuries. A couple of serious knee injuries in what is still a, a very embryonic career, but has the ability to score unexpected goals out of nothing. And an example of that we have just seen. She does, and that was an absolutely brilliant one. Saw that Mary Ertz was slightly off her line. She wasn't too far off her line. It had to be the perfect finish to chip it straight over and into the back of the net, and, and credit to her, she absolutely nailed it. Lad. Toon. That it. Well, advantage was being played, but there was no advantage to be gained. Johnson with the late challenge on Badiak. Yeah, a really heavy challenge there on Badiak. Definite free kick. But credit to the referee for for trying to play that advantage. I think sometimes we get we get too caught up with giving the fouls early and saying we should have played on. But the referee tried there to to enable Manchester United to to continue to play, but did well to pull it back. Well, three times in the last four seasons, Lewis have gone out of the FA Cup at the first hurdle. Reaching the quarter-final for the first time this season. And still, they have not given up hope on prolonging their run in the competition. They are, though, going to sacrifice some defensive experience in pursuit of the second goal, because Rianne Cleverly is making way. So, too, Nat Johnson. Coming on, Paula Howells and Kenzie Weir, who will take over from Cleverly in defence, the 19-year-old on loan from Everton. <laughs> Nicely done by Turner. Marisa, whose goal is now the goal that separates the sides, finds Ladd. Letizia to ground, but no decision until Letizia is deemed to... Well, Scott Booth's reaction tells you that ultimately it has been deemed to be a foul on Maya Letizia, but I think Lewis thought that they might be getting the, the free kick for obstruction. Well, it's an interesting decision because the referee didn't seem to make any kind of decision that it, that it was a foul and then if Letizia was to to dive on top of it having not got the decision which she's claiming there that, that she was pushed have to wait for the replay to um, I'm not convinced I think for me that's that's a Lewis a Lewis free kick for obstruction I think uh, yeah Rebecca McKenna can be feeling as though she's been hard done by that Zellum a long way back and getting a little shunt from Hazard. A reminder that Lewis are uh, in the mood to continue to make something of this. Zellum calmly into the path of Badier. Here's Toon. Badier. Ella Toon. Russo. Oh, whipped in. And across the face of goal, but after the ball had crossed the line for a goal kick. Good combination play there from Manchester United in wide areas. It's what they haven't been allowed to do by Lewis this game so far in great amounts. Rousseau, Badje, Toon combining with one and two touches, pulling the defenders out of position is what's giving them opportunities. And as Lewis get more and more tired, that they'll have more opportunities to do that. So it's, it's, a, it's a mental game now as well as a physical one for Lewis. 
Uh, that does not look good for Maria Torres Dotter, who has come off with an injury in this second half and is uh, hobbling away with some assistance. McKenna did really well to get there, but keeping the ball in play, that was altogether more difficult. She's been tireless in her work rate today. She, she's been outstanding for, for Lewis. Worked for, from the, the entire length of the pitch, done more defending than she, she should have liked to, but she was brilliant up against Garcia in that first half, and, and she's been great in the second half as well, relentlessly working up and down that wing. Mark Skinner will be hoping he is the manager to help guide Manchester United to a, a first major piece of silverware, whether that's the FA Cup, whether it's the WSL title, time will tell. But Scott Booth and Lewis still with a big say in how this tie is going to be settled over the course of the next eight and a half minutes. It's an opportunity for some some game management from Manchester United here as well. Craft. It was intended for Mason, but Marks harmlessly out of play. It's the crowd starting to, to get a little bit excited after that goal. It's important for Lewis, they can maintain that excitement from them. It definitely helps having the crowd on your side and having them cheering. That extra extra player on the pitch for you. Well, the Lewis defensive line has done its job pretty well in terms of catching Manchester United players offside this afternoon. One of two quarter-final ties between teams in the championship and teams in the WSL is going down to the wire unless Manchester United can settle it here. Badiak denied by Whitehouse. Russo it was who created the chance and might be able to come up with something else again now. Whitehouse clawing it away before it reached Paris. Carried away from immediate danger by Howells. Here's Badier who just had that opportunity to surely put the tie once and for all beyond reach. <laughs> Haley Ladd. Aoife Mannion, Alatoon, drifting into space and getting support from Ladd. Letizia, it's on by Russo, the White House manages to keep it in play. White House has had a really solid game. For Lewis, she's made some smart stops, been effective. This is one of her best ones. Fantastic foot save, came out, closed the angle down for, from Badje. Gave her no angle to shoot at and made a really important block. Kept her team in contention in this match. Yeah, might yet prove to be a, an important intervention. She's also coming to the assistance of teammate Amber Keegan Stobbs, who's the latest to be requiring treatment. There have been plenty of stoppages throughout the game. Yeah, one would imagine there'd be a substantial amount of injury time at the end of this game. Could have five or six. What we're about to see now, though, is a Manchester United change up front. Russo departs. I thought she had her tenth goal of the season. And her touch not deemed to be the one to put Manchester United in front in the first half. Instead, it was a Rianne Cleverly own goal and on in her place. 
comes a striker of considerable experience, 35-year-old Rachel Williams, to help Manchester United try and see things out. The alteration for Lewis, he stops the part. And another of their recent arrivals, another player who joined in January, Aksa Mushtak is on for the conclusion. She scored the, the last of the six goals that Lewis managed against fourth-tier Cardiff in the last round. Yeah, Lewis have, have played two teams from the third tier and another from the fourth to get this far. But have managed to compete admirably with a side from the very top of the English game. Manchester United looking to get past championship opposition for the third time in a row in their FA Cup run. Ella Toon. Spoke of her pride of wearing the Manchester United shirt as a, a United fan. Well, Badier offside. So her claims of uh, handball will fall on deaf ears. Again, it's this right wing area that's causing problems for, for Lewis. They're defending quite well, but... Manchester United are, are getting down in the, these areas with Badje, Toon and, and previously Alessia Russo coming out in these areas. That's where the most problems are being caused for Lewis at the moment. Oh, forward for Paris. Who gets there and is away? Nikita Paris! Well, you would expect her to score, she would have expected to score. You would expect her to hit the target at least. It's a great through ball. She used her strength really well to hold off the defender. Just snatched the shot a little bit. I think it bounced up at her. But you've got to make the goalkeeper work from there. And more than that, from the quality of Nikita Paris, it should be in the back of the net. The confirmation, by the way, that the dripping pan is at near capacity the the numbers allowed for for today were extended ever so slightly it's an effort flashes well wide of Mary Earps's goal 2,800 inside this stadium 15% of the tickets sold sold to Manchester United fans who've had that long journey to the south coast for this FA Cup quarter final that's one thing you can say about Manchester United especially as a former player the fan base is fantastic. They follow the team across the country. Week in, week out, it's brilliant support. Paris on the move. Again, Paris looking to create another opportunity. Nikita Paris! With the goal that will surely send Manchester United through to the FA Cup semi-finals. And maintains her record of scoring in every round. One chance missed. But immediately afterwards, another taken to make it Lewis 1, Manchester United 3. It's a direct ball for, from Manchester United and great strength again from the key to Paris. A slightly more difficult finish than the one she just missed. But as you said, she wasn't going to miss two in a row and a really clinical, calm, composed finish into the back of the net. And that should be game set and match for Manchester United now. Completely deceived goalkeeper Sophie Whitehouse. That is outstanding centre forward play from the player that scored the winner against Sunderland to go with a goal early on in the game in round four that contributed to the 5 0 win over Durham in round five and has now scored the goal in the quarter final to once again extinguish the nerves that have been creeping into the Manchester United team collectively after Lewis got themselves back into the contest at 2-1. Now in the final minute of the 90, he would suggest the game is up for the championship side in terms of the admirable resolve and determination that they have demonstrated. They have. They've been, they've worked so hard, they've worked relentlessly and tirelessly throughout the match. They'll have to do it for another seven minutes, which once you've if they'd have seen seven minutes come up when they were 2-1 down, it might have been quite promising, but at 3-1 down, it, it's probably too tall a task. 
but yeah, they've got to be proud of, of how well they've worked today, especially their goalkeeper. She's she's put in some brilliant perform she put in a brilliant performance, made some fantastic saves uh, uh, and been really confident there in that back line. Well, they've taken it to the very dying embers of the contest against one of the best sides in the country. Zellen with the free kick. Oh, headed goal was by Mannion, scrambled away. And then a free kick in Lewis's favour. Collision right in front of goalkeeper Whitehouse. It's Williams who helped it on. Mannion, who was just looking to help lift it into a dangerous area again. Not sure if Rachel Williams perhaps came through with quite a bit of force at that back post area. Just a bit too physical for the referee. Any complaints about the uh, official man of the match from a Lewis point of view? Goalkeeper Sophie Whitehouse, who contributed to keeping them in the game for as long as they were in it for. But have anticipated a busy afternoon against the side second in the top flight of the women's game. Maybe wasn't called into action as much as she might have expected in the first half, but has certainly been busy in this second half. She has, and definitely deserving of the Player of the Match award. She, she's all helped to organise her back line. She's commanded aerial balls that have come in and made a number of smart stops when, when she's been called upon. She, she's had a very strong game. Here's Ladd. Back to Mannion. Zellum for Turner. Closed down by Mason. Hustling and harrying right to the very end. Letizia trying to get the ball away under pressure from McKenna. And eventually it goes out of play off Letizia. And getting a little bit scrappy in these latter stages. Still got four minutes of, of added on time to, to go. There's still opportunity for Lewis to get back into this game. A free kick for the challenge on Howes. Manchester United's delay tactics not being very well received locally. It is a yellow card for Maya Letizia. I mean, I don't think there was too much discreet about that kicking the ball away. I think it's a rightful yellow card for the referee there. Can Lewis set us up for a grandstand finale? Amelia Hazard standing over the free kick. There's still time for something dramatic. As it delivers Went for power rather than placement. And Manchester United relieved to get the ball clear. Mannion wins the header up against Kraft. Zellum. Mushtak in and to ground under the challenge of Zellum. This is where Lewis needs to set this up correctly. Don't worry about rushing it, taking it too quickly. Set the ball up, deliver the ball in, make it difficult for Maria, let's make it difficult for the Manchester United back line. It's all about getting it direct right now. In from Hazard. Oh, chance very nearly came the way of Mushtak. United reacted well. Hazard up against Toon. Delivery intercepted by Zellem. And now Paris and Manchester United can break quickly. McKenna can see that safely behind for a goal kick. 
Yeah, the key to Paris just delayed a little bit in possession there, enabled Lewis players to, to get back and get into their shape. And with a couple of minutes left on the clock, I don't think Manchester United were too concerned of committing too many bodies forward. All about staying in shape and just ensuring the route through to the semi-final is a sensible, simple one from here. Toon. Wonderful vision, but Wardlaw anticipating what was coming. Turner recognises she's about to be put under some pressure. The endeavour all the way through to the final whistle from both sets of players. It's been a fiercely competitive cup tie. Manchester United, the overwhelming favourites ahead of it and will be deserving winners of it. But Lewis have made a real contest of the occasion. And United still looking for a goal to make absolutely sure, even if the clock is now ticking well beyond the aspirations of the home side. Here's Zellum. Lad. A bit of calm in amongst the chaos that we've seen in recent minutes from Manchester United. The chaos is definitely the word. There are large portions of this game where there was a lot of chaos. Oh, Paris, wonderful delivery. Toon without the contact that was required to get the better of Whitehouse. Great long ball there from Mannion. Paris does well to get the ball across and Ella Toon just can't quite get the connection. A fantastic delivery in from Paris on this right-hand side. Well, Mark Skinner's side continue their FA Cup adventure at the expense of Lewis, but once again, just as they were against Sunderland in round four, have been pushed hard by a team from the second tier. Just as we saw in the first half, we are playing well beyond the allotted stoppage time. Williams for Paris, who already has one goal. And Nikita Paris is unable to help herself to a second. Well, it was always going to be a historic day, whichever way you looked at it. Championship Lewis in the quarterfinals for the first time. And they have taken Manchester United the distance before the WSL got the clinching goal right at the end through Nikita Paris to secure their place in the semi-finals of the FA Cup for the very first time. But boy, were they tested, especially when Emily Kraft struck to reduce the deficit to 2-1 after Vildebar Reis's header had put Manchester United 2-0 up and seemingly in control of the game. The first half goal, an own goal of Rian Cleverly ultimately the one that set Manchester United up for a victory, but a victory that was far from straightforward. Scott Booth's side can be incredibly proud of the contribution that they have made to the game. But in the end, the favourites, the team placed 17 positions higher in the league standings than their opponents have managed to get the job done. And it is Manchester United who will be in the draw for the final four of this season's Women's FA Cup. A full time at the dripping pan. It is finished. Lewis 1, Manchester United 3.